Uh, it's my pleasure to, uh, to provide you a live demo uh, with, with some use cases. Uh, I'll actually be showing the system from three main uh, perspectives. I'm going to start off with being uh, an asset administrator. Then I'm going to move into a role of as, as an end user. And lastly, I'm going to look at the analyst experience and how we can optimize the, the performance and the efficiency for, for that. Um, first use case is very much about asset management and its combined strength with, uh, with ITSM. Um, and for that, I'm logged in here as being the asset administrator, as you can see. Um, I've got some, some dashboards to my availability. So the default dashboard shown to me is, is my asset manager dashboard. And with that, I have a complete overview of all the asset types that I have. And they, they might be IT related, they might be facility related, they might be medical related. So for medical equipment, that might be IoT. So all types of assets that you might have within the organization and how they are distributed across the organization. Maybe you're interested in assets that are reaching their, their warranty expiry. Maybe there are certain assets that haven't contacted the network in a long time. So those are the ones that you may want to focus on. Um, but I also have information on my asset contracts. Yeah, so what kind of contracts do I have? I, I might have a purchase agreement or a maintenance agreement, but I also have a lease agreement or subscription uh, contract. And when do these contracts actually, when are they up for renewal? Um, so we're going to be uh, getting alerts to, to all that. Um, also on the asset exceptions, it's giving some really useful information about any, any discrepancies that we see from what we physically um, find on the machine through our automated discovery scanning and what we have registered in our CMDB. So maybe there is like a, a difference in the location or, or the user assignment and we need to take action on it or at least double check what, what the reality is. So it really identifying discrepancies between what the reality is and what we have registered in our CMDB, making sure that everything remains um, remains at good quality. Um, we're also looking into our asset procurement so we can manage purchase orders, we can look at them by vendor, or we can look at that at only the ones that I'm, I'm responsible for. Uh, so these are just some dashboards with information that are uh, that is useful for the, for the asset administrator. If you look at asset management, it's very much based on uh, the product catalog as, as a main component. And, and that's where you as an organization can maintain the models that you maintain as, as the standard models in your organization. And there might be models related to, to facility, uh, like you know, I've got a certain defibrillator uh, with, with some main characteristics, uh, with a nice icon on it, and, and maybe the life cycle of the asset. Uh, but I can also have a look into uh, more my IT-related assets, like yeah, I've got an, an iPad mini. I know the, the internal external cost. I know the life cycle of the asset. I also have some replenishment information, meaning that if I can see that I'm running below stock, how much should I then replenish uh, for, that, uh, for that particular model? I can also look at my stock levels here. So I know uh, for this iPad mini, uh, I've got five items in stock, and these are the five items that, uh, that we've got registered in, uh, in this system. So the um, product catalog is used later on, as we'll see also from the end user perspective, because this information we show here on the description and, and the, uh, the actual inventory is something we use also on the end user side. Then let's move into the hardware asset uh, themselves. Um, this is very much, I'm going to do a global scan of anything which is related to finance, because I know I've got some, some nice details on these. And this is really about providing, uh, let's say, a 360 degree view on, on all of the asset, uh, the, all of the asset details. Let's come back, let's wait a little second. I'm still loading. Okay, there it is. Um, so I'm going to look at a particular um, server here, uh, which is my finance server. And for this one, uh, as you can see, this is having some, some main characteristics that is automatically inherited from the catalog to which it was linked to. I know the user location assignment and the status about it, but also what is very useful if you would have um, an incident, it would be very useful to have immediate information about the life cycle of the asset. It would also be very good uh, to have information directly at hand about the warranty details, because having this information at hand 
then you can actually make some informed decisions about what to do with that incident. Yes, should I fix it myself? Reaching end of life, maybe I should uh, look for a, a replacement item. Uh, if it's still under warranty, maybe I should uh, get the vendor in, in touch and uh, make sure that he fixes the issue. And so having that information directly at hand is very useful. Also, we want to have um, up-to-date information about the discovery. And that's why uh, Aaron already mentioned about our Evanti uh, discovery solution, that we can feed information in automatically into the CMDB, making sure that, that all these technical details about IP address, MAC address, CPU, memory slots, and all that is, is always up to date. Um, so we're keeping track of that contractual information, uh, sorry, the technical information. But here we're also looking at the contracts. Uh, you might have a purchase agreement, a maintenance agreement. You want to have information about when to renew and what a potential uplift could, could mean to you. So having that information is, 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 is absolutely relevant. Um, but also looking into the more financial side of the thing. Um, so we can link it into which purchase order has this particular asset. And this, so this, um, this, this is Superdome server. Um, with which, which purchase order have we actually acquired it? Uh, what was the initial purchase price? Um, also considering the age from that life cycle element we've seen before, we can then automatically calculate the depreciation value. Uh, so the current value of that asset. We keep track of the financial transactions, yeah, your maintenance transaction, your purchase transactions. We keep track of the logistical transactions. Yeah, when did it arrive in stock? When did we, we move it to, to a different location? When did we take it into production? When did it come back for repair? When did we dispose it? Yeah, so having that full logistical flow. Um, so again, part of that 360 degree view about all of the asset information. Uh, but not only that, we also want to look at what the integration is with ITSM. Yeah? Because if we have certain models that have many incidents, we might need to have a conversation with our vendor to say, okay, that, that performance of that model is really poor. We need to get a better price negotiated or maybe get a replacement, uh, a different model for that. On the other side, if you have certain models that are performing, performing really well, so that they have hardly any issues, why not extend the life cycle of that asset from, let's say, 36 months to 48 months, saving a lot of cost there. Um, we're also linking into change management uh, because if you're implementing a change and which is linked to certain assets, you might want to validate that all the prerequisites for that change have been met uh, because maybe you first need to upgrade certain things on these assets before you can implement that, that change. So having all of that information together um, is truly really useful. So it's, it's about the ITIL perspective. It's about the inventory financial transactions. It's about the contracts, the, the, the technical side, and the full life cycle elements about the assets. And that's what we mean with providing a 360 degree view on all of the assets information. So now I'm going to move into my second perspective, which is the end user perspective. Uh, for this, I'm going to change browsers. And I'm now actually Marsha Hendrink. Uh, accessing the self-service portal. Um, this is just a design that, that has come out of the box for me. Um, I can do some generic search and search for, search for certain things in the knowledge base or in the service catalog or in the FAQs and, and so forth. Uh, but I can also go straight here into my service catalog to request for something. Um, that could be based on, for example, I want to just look at some facility type of requests uh, maybe I want to uh, have somebody move from, from department X to department Y or from the location Amsterdam to the location London, or I have a request for, uh, for facility or I need some additional office equipment. I can make all these kind of requests, which I assume most of you will be familiar with. Um, I can also just do a global search on the top. So I don't have to worry about the categorization. But here I've got one which I've highlighted as my favorite, which is the mobile device request. And this is the one I'll actually be executing for this little case. Um, so I'm requesting um, the mobile device. Marsha is based out of London, so that's her home location, office location. I can choose for either a smartphone, tablet, or wearable. In this case, I will choose for the, um, for the, for the tablet. And here I see the different models that we have inherited from our product catalog. Yeah, so the thing I showed you initially.